Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, Nitpicking People. Hmm, do you know some? Ah, I know that over the years being in sales, I can tell you that nitpicking people were not my favorite customers to assist. But I will tell you that they did get what they wanted. But it was a lot of work to make them happy. Some of you all have a nitpicking wife, a nitpicking husband. You got a nitpicking daughter, a nitpicking son. You got just nitpicking relatives all around. Don't let a holiday season show up. The nitpicker is going to show up and they're going to talk about how, oh, this isn't right. This isn't good. How come you guys are always doing this this way? How come you can't do it that way? Oh, just give me that pot. Give me that pan. Let me show you how it's done. Oh, do you decorate the table that way? Or are you even going to decorate the table? Oh, look at these floors. Have you had these floors buffed out? I mean, you got such a nice house. And yet you didn't even buff out your floors. Mm, I don't eat that. I don't eat that kind of food. (laughs) I brought my own. Wow. So the nitpicking person. What are we going to do with him or her? Well, oftentimes what we do is we ignore. We do when it comes to family members. We just go over there and sit with some other individuals and start talking. And we may even talk about that person who has been nitpicking. Okay. And we may resolve in our minds that we're not going to let that person show back up again. I'm sorry. You're just too funny acting. No, 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 girl. Come on now. Mm-mm, honey. Nope. You're not welcome. But I just, oh, come on. Let's use another example. The nitpicking father, the nit- the nitpicking mother. So it's like picking paint off the wall when dealing with some individuals these parents you see how when you see paint that is slowly peeling off a wall and it's just a small just a small piece of paint right but then somebody wants to come along and they want to just rip that paint off the wall and now it's big and now it's going to require a tool to scrape it it's going to require you know, some patchwork, it's going to require matching the paint. It's just a lot of work, right? Well, you got that parent who has already provoked, long provoked their children to anger. So whenever they're around the parent, they're angry. Okay. They have an attitude. And so the parent has an attitude right back, tends to be difficult, angry, what have you. So these things are floating around. They're going around. And not only that, now the parent is nitpicking. You already started these issues a long time ago. And now there's a subject matter that may have been a bit small. Started off where it was just a minor disagreement. Has now blown up like pulling that paint off the wall you couldn't have just let that flaw that speck uh uh-oh just let that be this person is not ready to change your son or daughter is going to be who he or she's going to be but you just had to go and here's another example rip the band-aid off that wound Now it's exposed. Now it's oozing. Now it's bloody. In some situations, there really is some wounds because somebody's getting slapped, kicked, punched. Doesn't matter. There's fighting going on. Doesn't matter who started it. There's fighting going on. Couldn't it have been 
easier just to j- just walk away from that thing? Couldn't it have been easier to exemplify self-control in conversing with the son or daughter rather than nitpicking? What's up with your hair? What's up with your clothes? Why you come over here looking like that? Why you smell like that? Where's your son? Where's your daughter? Where's my grandchild? You know, oh, probably out there in them streets again. Good for nothing. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, look at the nitpicking. Look at the negativity, the criticism. And now you expect to be respected. Hmm. Where's all this coming from? It's a person who simply is not happy on the inside. Made their own share of mistakes, poor decisions. Got a lot of time on his or her hands to say whatever, to do whatever. First Corinthians 15, 33, this is how we deal with the nitpicking person, the believer, according to scriptures. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. So when I look at a scripture like that, I'm not coming around. Okay. I'm not going to be on the phone. I'm not showing up for the holiday event. Until there is a renewing of one's mind, until there is a deliverance that takes place. And sometimes this doesn't happen until somebody is on their hospital bed. Now it's safe. Because we do have the violence, some of us in our families, that the best way to approach that individual is when they got the tubes up their mouth with the oxygen over or the tubes up their nose with the oxygen over their mouth and they're laying on their back and they don't have their handlers around them because their handlers have long disappeared out of their lives or worse in their graves. So no protection is just you in that room and now you get to speak because I will tell you with a nitpicking person, they do not allow you to say all that you need to say. This is why the screaming matches end up taking place. Who's over there yelling? I mean, this is supposed to be Christmas. This is supposed to be New Year's. This is supposed to be Valentine's Day, right? <laughs> we could go down the list of holidays. Thanksgiving. What's wrong with them? Why are they yelling over in the other room? Because he's back to nitpicking again. He's trying to bring her down. He... <laughs> He gets a kick out of doing that sort of thing. When your heart is joyful, do you go around individuals who corrupt your good manners? Of course not. And if you do, well, be prepared for that joy to disseminate. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine. I'm around the people of the Lord or I'm on the phone with the people of the Lord. I'm reading my word. I'm feeling inspired by people who are not religious or spiritual, but they just want to put some positivity in the atmosphere. Amen. (laughs) So there's this joyful heart that rises up. You're going around the house and even your family members are saying, hmm, Why are you so bright and chipper today? I got a joyful heart. A joyful heart is good medicine. But listen to this. A crushed spirit. That person who is nitpicking crushes a spirit and does what? If you're dealing with this for years, dries up the bones. You can even see how that youthful glow, the youthful beauty goes away when certain individuals are around our elders, our seniors. She used to be bright when her daughter came around. He used to feel good when his son came around. They had a youthful glow about them. Despite the wrinkles and the gray hair, there was an energy. There was something that was uplifting. But then the daughter married that no good husband or the Son ended up being with that no good wife and the nitpicking energy transferred over and then it showed up in front of that mother, that father, and now they're weak. 
their bones are drying up. You see, you see how that nitpicking behavior has a way of transforming and getting around the circle. Lord Jesus, keep that nitpicking person away from your dying loved one. Because every day we're dying. It's not always about a person laying on their back, right? With tubes up their nose. But every day, this is fact. The body gets older. It gets weaker. It's not as strong as it once was. It's not as energetic. And then you got to bring this nitpicking person around me. Go ahead on with that. I don't want that person around me. Can the nitpicking be used in a good way? Okay, so the person showed up in the hospital room and demanded this for mama, that for mama, this for daddy, what have you. Okay. But now they're starting to talk about old stuff and they're bringing a lot of things to my attention that I don't want to hear. Keep her out my room now. Appreciate it, but she got to go. You see? And some of you all have been dealing with this for quite some time. It's drying up your bones. It's corrupting your good manners, this nitpicker. Lord Jesus, humble yourselves before the Lord. If you find yourself guilty as charged, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. I know you want it your way. I know this is why you act this way. (laughs) I've been around my share and I was like, okay, I get it. The positive in this is that she going to get this thing done. He going to make sure things happen. That's why they tend to be so particular, right? We used other words, right? Oh, she's so particular, but nitpicking, okay? Humble yourself before the Lord because there is a degree of arrogance that comes with the nitpicker, isn't it? I'm better than you. I got to have my atmosphere a certain kind of way. You know that this is the way we do things. I'm very detail oriented. (laughs) And it can be for good, but it can also drive you crazy. The nitpickers never satisfied. I found this consistent with each person who was this way, prideful And never satisfied. Cost them their marriages. Made life difficult. During parenting. Weren't the best of friends. Do you have to come over here and talk about the fact that my hair is not done? Do you really have to talk about I gained some weight? Yes, everybody knows. So what? It got so bad that now... What is what used to be considered good advice is now people have said shaming. Oh, don't shame. Don't body shame. Don't shame this person because of the choice in a partner. Nitpickers are the cause of that. (laughs) You see what you did? You see what you did? Constantly getting on that girl about what she got in her plate. Constantly talking about how big she was. Constantly talking about all of these things that don't have anything to do with you. Did not want to live and let live. We provide the advice to those who I want to do better with the advice that I receive. But. What we found, some of us who have been, unfortunately, around nitpickers over the years, is that they enjoyed picking on people. That's what it boiled down to. It made them feel better. They got a lot of laughs. They really, they really got a lot of laughs. Because of the way they delivered their comedy routine. Because sometimes it's not always about, you know, that mom, right? Who, girl, you need to lose some weight. You need to exercise. You need to do this. You need to watch your, you know, uh, portion sizes and all that. No. Sometimes it's, 
you know what? I just want to let you know, man, your head is so big. I mean, come on now. He, that man can't do anything about his head. Oh, what's up with you and them clothes? I mean, come on now. Did you go over to the Goodwill and get those clothes? Come on. <laughs> no, he didn't go to the Goodwill. He actually spent quite a bit of money on those clothes. Mm, you, then you need to take them back. <laughs> You see, we had elders that would do that. Shame you right in front of all your cousins. Made you feel some kind of way about them. And then they wonder why nobody came and seen about, came to see about them once they were older. Hmm. It's a humbling experience when no one comes around. And sometimes that's what it takes for some individuals to stop nitpicking. I thank you as always for taking time out of your schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in Om Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for your donations and blessings to you.